Traders, Brian here with a weekend update for next week, week of 20 to 24 May 2024. Let's get right into it. All right, this is update number four. Um, of course, you know I've been out for two weeks, not trading because of a, because of a bicycle accident. So I should be back in full swing uh, behind the computer starting Monday morning. Um, here's some new things that uh, that I've taken care of over this weekend that we'll be implementing into next week. Uh, first thing is I am behind on the weekly statistical recaps, so I'm two weeks behind. It'll probably be Friday before I'm caught up uh, for the full three weeks that um, that I need to keep track of. So anyway, so that's a, that's a do out. I uh, added a momentum line. It's a derivative EMA of the MACD Bollinger Band midline. So uh, I'll show you that in just a few minutes. Added the uh, B4 V3 swing breakout function to our flagship trend model, which is the um, markers version is well, as soon as I can find my cursor. Markers version is uh, the B4 jiggle with histogram, the NQ version, which is current as of today. And then the uh, sterile version without markers is uh, the BA trend black and white B4 sterile model. And I also added the momentum line to this, uh, to this template as well. It's current as of 5-19-2024. You'll have access to both of those templates uh, late this evening, Sunday evening. Higher time frame chart, uh, well, I just skipped right down to the current templates I'm using since I'm, uh, since I'm in here. So uh, no change to the higher time frame charts, the BA trend, BLT sterile, and that's uh, it's current as of 428. All right, so let's get back up here. So we talked about the new posts and tweaks, setups. You know, I'm going to go over those in just a second. Uh, the J John Wick, the B4 jiggle, and then of course uh, higher time frame context, context. You know, utilizing the Magic Six. So you'll notice I didn't put deep pullbacks in here this time, even though that's one of the one of the uh, pullbacks, um, what I'm going to do is, because I like the way that swing breakout function works, I'm going to show you in a second, it's really helping to narrow down the John Wicks and the B4 Jiggles. So I'm getting closer and closer to my end state, uh, which is a complete isolation of the highest probability John Wicks and B4 Jiggles. Okay. So let's get right into it and take a look at uh, our flagship trend model. Okay, you'll notice here I don't have the long-term uh, trend magic line on here. I just I don't really need it. Um, I know most of you, most of everybody watching the live stream has that indicator on there. You know, I keep saying trying to get the trading chart here less and less. So more signals and paint bars and fewer indicators. That's what I'm looking for down the road. Now, there is a lot of arrows on this chart, but you'll see they're, they're pretty accurate, okay? So we've got, I'm gonna explain them in a second. You got just a series of up arrows here, series of down arrows there. Can't really argue with that. Uh, when the NASDAQ gets very choppy, you will find that there's some of this like right in here really choppy uh, down arrow up arrow up arrow down arrow so um, but anyway uh, I'm really happy with how this is uh, how this is progressing but my end state has always been because we know we have an edge a, a directional edge with the B4 jiggle we know we have a directional edge with the BLT trigger lines. BLT trigger lines are simply, um, they're not on this chart, but it's represented by a crossover of zero on the BLT histogram. This is a momentum derivative of the trigger lines. So if we get the crossover here, then trigger lines are positive. This is what I call the playground. 
So we're looking for trades, bullish trades inside the bullish playground, bearish trades inside the bearish playground. Okay. All right. More more on the arrows in just a second. Here is the uh, momentum line, and uh, it's like I said, it's going to be in the templates, uh, so you guys can download that and use it. And again, it's it's an EMA of an EMA of the MACD's Bollinger Band. So that's really all it is. So you can see it's pretty smooth, pretty accurate, and most of the time pretty early uh, on these on these good trends right here. So it really works well with the B4 V3 breakout on the indicator that I that separate video I uh, I made this weekend on a couple of applications for using swing breakout indicator on the uh, B4 V3. So anyway. It's all this is you can see here you know tries to keep you with the trend and uh, you, know, you can't really argue with that that's perfect right there it's what we're looking for I mean even though these potentially were valid trades they just didn't work out um, yeah it just didn't work out at all I would have ended up losing taking full stop loss on on if I'd have tried to get long on those trades there um, but you can see here everything's going great. Now, what am I going to be focusing on this week based off of you know laying on the sofa couch for two two consecutive weeks and doing nothing but dreaming and contemplating about how to isolate the B4 jiggle, you know, how I can manipulate you know the existing suite of indicators by creating derivatives that may smooth out the process and help to isolate what we already have a directional edge in. So this is what I come up with. All right, so this is uh, all right, you'll notice here, of course, the up triangle is the B4 breaking out of the Bollinger Bands. This lime green is a B4 V3 swing high breakout. Okay, the blue arrow is a B4 jiggle signal. All right, these are all can be automated. You could just you could uh, manipulate markers and just you know buy and sell at these arrows right here. I don't know if that would work or not. I haven't back tested it in a full auto mode. Probably wouldn't. But anyway, how I'm going to use this in the manual mode is uh, I'm looking for the combo of the, in a bullish scenario, a up before up triangle and the lime green arrow. They don't have to be on top of each other. They just have to be in sequence. And then we look for the first pullback. And then we try to get in and hang on to get our 5, five to 10, 15, whatever, whatever you're doing. Okay? That's it. And... I'm going to try not to push it and trying to get one trade in one leg and then leave it alone. So, but what you can do is you get this up arrow, you can look for the first John Wick right here. You get that, you definitely have five points there. And if you decide to leave that alone, then so be it. You leave it alone, you wait for the next setup. All right, so now we're looking for on a bearish thing, I'm looking for the. Uh, Before down triangle and a red triangle. The red, or I'm sorry, red down arrow. The red down arrow. No. Forget I said that. Let me go through. I, I didn't go through the uh, down arrows for you. So the red down arrow is a B4 jiggle. And I'll, I'll put a little matrix out on this when you guys are watching it Monday so you'll know what, uh, what arrows mean what. A week from now, most of these arrows are going to disappear. I just need them on here for next week while I'm watching all this stuff unfold. So red down arrow is a bearish before jiggle. An orange arrow, down arrow, is a deeper pullback. Uh, did I have a black arrow? Yeah, black arrows over here on the upside are deep bullish pullbacks. All right, so lime green is the for the bullish is the B4 
swing indicator breakout to the upside. Of course, you know the up triangle is. The blue is a B4 bullish jiggle. There you have another B4 uh, V3 swing breakout. B4 jiggle, jiggle, swing breakout, deep pullback, bullish deep pullback. Okay? So we'll just go right down the line here. Red down triangle outside of the uh, Bollinger Bands. Red down arrow, bearish B4 jiggle. Yellow down arrow is a B4 V3 bearish breakout to the downside. And orange is a bearish um, deep pullback. All right, so that's the uh, that's the sequence. What I'm looking for is the um, red down and the first yellow. So it happens right here. So now we're just uh, we're waiting for the pullback. If I get um, if I get any of these, the up triangle or the green, then it negates that and I have to wait for another sequence. So here we get the other sequence here, red, yellow. So now I'm just waiting for the for the pullback and lo and behold, there's the B4 jiggle. There we go. Okay. So that's really all I'm focused on. I'm not going to go through all these. I think you have the idea. So I'm looking for the, in the bearish mode, the down triangle from the B4 and the yellow down arrow. In the up bullish scenario I'm looking for the B4 up triangle and the lime green up arrow that sets my sequence then I'm looking for the John Wick you know back here we had this you had the John Wick you could take and there was the B4 jiggle all right here you had the John Wick you got your five to seven and you had uh, another uh, B4 jiggle right there so all really good trades okay so that's that's what I'm focused on on the entry chart for next week. And of course, you know, the higher time frame is really what I'm taking my cues from. So I'm looking at this and looking at the levels, uh, the intraday FIB levels, to, uh, to look for setups on the uh, entry chart. Okay, so, you know, I love these trades right here. Bearish, higher time frame, 36.6. Bearish trigger lines, and we get the John Wicks on these. These are just, I love those trades right there. Um, you know, we come down, we get underneath the trigger lines. Nice John Wick there to come back down. Another John Wick to get you some more points. On the upside, we clear the trigger lines. You got the John Wick there, John Wick there, John Wick there. All those would have gotten you at least your five. So bearish trigger lines, John Wick down. Just really showing you John Wicks right here. Um, there's other trades on the entry chart. Like this little wick right here, you can barely see it. It's a nice prominent wick on the 22.4 entry chart. So that's a nice entry chart John Wick that just takes you straight down. I mean, these are just my some of my favorite setups on the higher time frame. You know, look for these wick trades to play out. They're typically before jiggles on the entry chart. You know, they're just they just happen and happen. Yeah, I would have taken that one too. Uh, yeah, we might have. I would have probably uh, been taken out for a break even on that trade. All right. So um, I like the trigger line touches too, but you know, there's a. I'm waiting for a couple things on a trigger, trigger line touch for the higher time frame to get into the trade. Anyway, that is it. That's what I'm focused on for next week. So I'm anxious to get back. Glad I'll be back in the uh, saddle uh, trading next week. And uh, looking forward to seeing you guys in the uh, live trading room. All right, we'll see you at the uh, opening bell.